let's get it out of the way early. Mark Marrow was never going to make anyone's top favourite wrestler list. While Marrow was undeniably talented, it can be argued that he was a victim of bad timing and his career was doomed from the moment his wife got more popular than what he did. The Attitude Era sure was a weird time in wrestling. If only we knew what Sable was really like backstage. That being said, this video looks at the career of Mark Marrow and how it all came to a screeching halt, all thanks to a sable bomb. Marrow was born in Buffalo, New York. His parents divorced when he was 8 years old, with his mother supporting him and his two siblings by working two jobs. He played a lot of sports growing up, enjoying hockey and football. He has mentioned though that when he was young, he got involved in the wrong crowd and he began drug dealing at a young age. Before deciding to train to become a pro wrestler, Mark Marrow was a highly touted amateur boxer. He fought in four New York Golden Gloves tournaments, going undefeated in 15 bouts and winning four titles. One of his victories was reportedly over future world heavyweight boxing champion Riddick Bowe. At 26, Marrow decided to drop any plans he had of a professional boxing career and instead he began training to become a professional wrestler. A severely shattered nose put a halt to Mark's boxing aspirations and wrestling caught his eye while channel surfing with his friends at home. Mark Marrow started his wrestling journey with training by the Malenkos. Having worked as an enhancement talent for World Championship Wrestling, then head booker Dusty Rhodes created the Johnny B. Bad gimmick and repackaged Mark Marrow as a lipstick wearing, confetti gun firing flamboyant superstar. The name is an obvious nod to the Chuck Berry song Johnny B. Good, and the character was also heavily influenced by singer Little Richard. Quote Mark Marrow, It's almost like getting thrown out to the lions. You're out there with some big boys and it's kind of fend for yourself. There's a lot of jealousy and a lot of guys out trying to get you for a start. You hang in there. Having that boxing background, having that tough, tough background that I had growing up in New York, I had no problem. During his time in WCW, Mark Merrill developed into a fine worker. Much of that can be attributed to his work with the likes of Steve Austin, Stephen Regal, Cactus Jack and Brian Pullman. The more talented his opposition, the better chance Marrow had of learning his craft and becoming the good wrestler he ultimately became in WCW. Before the end of his WCW run, Marrow had picked up three television title wins within the company. His first reign came when he defeated Steven Regal, his second reign occurred after defeating Diamond Dallas Page and he finally defeated Lex Luger to kickstart his third reign. Not a bad list of wrestlers to defeat for belts. Creative differences led Marrow to leave WCW. According to the Observer newsletter, Mark Marrow asked that an angle, which involved him being managed by Kimberly Page, was dropped, blaming his deep religious beliefs and not wanting to be on the road with another man's wife, even though it was all for storyline. The original angle was supposedly to be where Kimberly would be with him, but then she would cost him a high stakes match and things would just go back to how they are, really standard stuff. Bischoff apparently said that he didn't want to be in a situation where every time they booked Mark Murrow in an angle, he wouldn't want to do what was asked of him because Jesus Christ wouldn't approve. This and his contract disputes would mean Mark Murrow was free to go and to look for work elsewhere. He would find himself in the office of Vince McMahon soon thereafter. His last WCW appearance before signing with WWE was on March 9th, 1996. After leaving WCW, he immediately signed a contract with the World Wrestling Federation where he began competing under his real name because WCW acquired the rights to the Johnny B. Bad name. Jim Cornette revealed that Vince McMahon and other WWF officials were completely enamoured with Mark Marrow's wife Sable upon meeting her. Mark had brought his then wife to a meeting set up to discuss his new role within the company. So as the story goes, Mark Marrow brought Sable along to ask Vince McMahon if he could fly Sable around with him while he was touring with WWF. Marrow was worried that his new WWF schedule would put a strain on his marriage and his solution was to have Sable beside him at all times. Mark had just indirectly introduced one of the biggest female stars in WWE history to the boss. Once Vince McMahon was introduced to Mark Marrow's wife, he envisioned the character of Sable. 
Mark Merrow debuted in the WWF as a fan favourite at WrestleMania 12, where he rescued Sable from Hunter Hearst Helmsley. Sable was initially given the role of Triple H's valet, but Merrow came to her rescue after Ultimate Warrior defeated Triple H at Mania 12. Merrow made his in-ring debut the following night on Monday Night Raw, where he defeated Isaac Yankum DDS. Beginning with the April 15th episode of Raw, Sable began accompanying Merrow to the ring during his matches and he adopted the nickname Wildman. On the September 6th episode of Raw, Wildman Mark Merrow participated in a tournament for the Intercontinental Championship, which was vacated by Ahmed Johnson due to an injury. Mark Merrow defeated Stone Cold Steve Austin, Owen Hart and Farouk to win the title on the September 23rd episode of Raw. He dropped the title to Hunter Hearst Helmsley the night after In Your House 10. An injury would sideline Mark Merrow in 1997 for 8 months. When he came back, he would be repackaged for the third time in his career. During his rehabilitation, he watched as his wife Sable became one of the most popular stars in WWE thanks to her beauty and her sex appeal. Sable was a product of the time. It seemed wrestling fans were clamouring over busty women with little clothing. It's just how it was back then. Quote Mark Merrow, I mean at the time when I first came in, Vince McMahon talked about wanting to put the world strap on me right away. I mean he had such big hopes for me and unfortunately it did not go that way. They gave me the intercontinental strap and of course that didn't go well and I blew out my knee. And at that time it was 8 months off and after those 8 months, coming back it was never the same. Mark Merrow returned to WWF television on the October 6th episode of Raw's War where he was repackaged as a boxer turned wrestler and got a new nickname, Marvelous Mark Merrow. Merrow had been gone from WWE TV during a transitional period in the company as things were starting to get more adult oriented due to the rise of the Attitude Era. Say what you want though, that Marvelous Mark Merrow theme music was pretty sweet. Merrow began a slow heel turn after becoming jealous of the following Sable had acquired in his absence and soon he wanted her out of the WWF. During this time he faced boxer Butterbean in a tough man contest at In Your House D-Generation X, which he lost by disqualification. The match has been often referred to as one of the worst matches of all time, go and look it up. As tensions mounted, Sable became more independent and she began to ignore her husband's demands. At the same time, a feud with Goldust and Luna forced them to work together, leading into a huge mixed tag match between the two duos at WrestleMania 14. After their win at Mania, they again found themselves at odds. When Mero defeated Sable at Over the Edge 1998, he introduced Jacqueline to WWE. Together, they developed into an annoying and obnoxious couple that took joy in tormenting Sable. At the same time, it became clear that Merrow was being shoved to the background in favour of a rivalry between the two women in his life. Merrow would go on to take defeats in the ill-fated Brawl for All shoot fight tournament. Quote Mark Merrow, When I see what I let my wife do in WWE, it is somewhat embarrassing. I couldn't imagine doing something like that today. Some of the things we were involved in, I just shake my head. I think at the time we were so caught up in getting her over. You get caught up in that, it's like an addiction. And with her spot on television, if you say no, someone else will jump in. It's been said that when Mark Morrow allowed Sable to perform her Sable Bomb finisher on him, many wrestlers refused to work with Mark Morrow. Jim Cornette said in an RF shoot interview that Steve Austin immediately phoned him after Morrow took the move. Austin was scheduled to work against Mark Morrow the next week and Austin says he wouldn't have a competitive match with Morrow after Sable powerbombed him. Austin's argument was, if Sable could do that to him, then Stone Cold Steve Austin would be able to finish him off in seconds. Morrow said about taking the Sable bomb, I have no regrets, I mean people say I ended my career when I allowed her to Sable bomb me, the powerbomb, in one of our disagreements we had in the ring. I understood a lot of guys wouldn't work with me after that because they said I allowed a girl to beat me up on national TV. But again remember, we are a married couple. We realised that this was only going to be a short part of our lives and we would be able to live the rest of our lives financially secure. So at that time, you don't think about maybe the other side, the detrimental effects. I mean someone could look at that later in life and not understand how someone could think like that. That I can certainly understand and respect. 
Merrow's last appearance on WWF television in the United States was on the November 30th, 1998 episode of WWF Raw. He had a shot at the WWF Light Heavyweight Championship, then held by Dwayne Gill, and promised to retire if he couldn't beat Gill. Dwayne Gill won the match with the help of the Job Squad. He wrestled one final time at the UK WWF Capital Carnage pay-per-view six days later, losing a tag match with Jacqueline as his partner against Sable and Christian. In 1999, both Marrow and Sable left the WWF. At the time, Marrow had three years remaining on his contract with a guaranteed salary of $350,000. Marrow subsequently did not wrestle for 18 months due to various nagging injuries and a shoulder surgery. After an extremely brief return to WCW in 2000 and a stint in the short-lived Axe Wrestling Federation in 2001, Marrow found his way to TNA in 2004, reprising his Johnny B. Bad character. In June and July 2007, Marrow commented on the Chris Benoit murder-suicide, appearing on numerous cable news programs and criticising both the wrestling industry and world wrestling entertainment. In an interview, Marrow admitted to using steroids and recreational drugs over a period of seven years and claimed that steroids had contributed to the early deaths of many wrestlers. It's hard to disagree with the man, really. Following his comments, Mark Marrow set up the Champions of Choices campaign, which is still going strong to this day. Mark Marrow has delivered over 2,000 different presentations relating to bullying, anti-drugs and sensitive issues such as suicide. Touring around high schools, mental health units and colleges, the former wrestler uses his own life experience to try and positively impact the lives of others. Marrow still to this day gives speeches and tries to share a positive message using his own experiences in the world of professional wrestling as an example of how people can turn their lives around.